Hey friends, this is the Miss Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead. Now I know you've seen me make an apron before, but today we're going to make an apron for me, for my Dickies work shirt. <laughs> This is a Dickies work shirt from Bill and Rosa at our off-grid solar cabin. And uh, they sent this to me so that I could make myself an apron like I made for my brother John. So, you all know him as J Null Zero. So, first and foremost, we have to make the apron part. And to do that, we're going to cut these sleeves off. That's first. You really want a good sharp pair of scissors? All right. So we're just going to start from the bottom of the armpit. And we're going to cut the arm right off all the way up to the collar. Just like that. And then we're going to do the same with the other sleeve. Make sure it's laying flat. Now, like I said, I made one of these for a gift. And I'll show you the link uh, if you want to see it. It was a great Christmas gift for my son's girlfriend. But this one's for Mama Wolfie. Not Nan Wolfie. Mama Wolfie. Me. All right. And back up there. Just like that. Now, I want my back to go around me a little better. So what I'm going to do, instead of just cutting the back right off, I'm going to um, cut it down here some. But I need en enough of this central part of the back is going to be my apron ties so let's get those out of the way first this is where our cutting for the back started or stopped when we cut the arms off I am just going to start I'm gonna eyeball it folks right from where it is at the back of the collar I'm gonna cut it up just like this and that's a pretty good eyeball job if you ask me just cut this part right here like that because I'm going to use a portion of this to continue around my back so this is a slightly different apron than what I made for a Christmas gift now let's eyeball up the other side which is actually pretty good because this crease here um, this crease here pretty much goes where I want it to so we're just going to run along this crease but if you can't eyeball it if you don't want to eyeball it use a piece of chalk and a yardstick if you really want to get fancy but you know me folks I just wing most of my life so let's cut here and we'll spread that open and this is going to give me a wider apron with a wider coverage because, let's face it, folks, I got me a belly. All right, now, we're going to cut this part off the back of the neck, leaving some so that we can fold it under. And these are going to be our ties. Okay, so I've taken two strips from the center of the back that we cut off. But these are going to be the ties for our apron. Now, let's get back to the apron itself. And like I said, I left some width here so that I, I left the part of the front of the shirt on so that I could have a wider apron to wrap around me better. And I'm just going to go up here. To the side see that's going to wrap around me quite nicely let's flip it around if you know it, folks if it makes you feel better to measure you go right ahead but half the time I sew like I cook okay and we're just going to go down here and these are where our ties are going and I'm just going to take a pin and right in between the second button that's open and the third button that's closed I'm just going to pin the fabric together because that's where I want it to be able to open to. We're going to go to the bottom of our apron and again we're going to take a pin and we're going to pin it closed. And that way we can start sewing right up and around. So now we're just going to sew our button front together all the way up. We will stop at the top pin, turn, 
drop the presser foot down, come across, turn again, whoops, let's take that pin out of there, it's in my way, we don't need it anymore. And we're going to sew all the way back down the other side of the buttons. And we're going to leave that genuine Dickies badge in there. Because you know me folks, I love Dickies. Get your mind out of the gutter. Alrighty, we're just going to trim off our excess thread. And Bob's your uncle. We have our open apron front, or our excuse me, Bob's your uncle. We have our closed apron front. Yes, you can see the white thread lines. Who cares? It's my apron, not yours. If you're making this apron, folks, you use whatever shirt you want, whatever colors of thread you want. You just make it your own. But this one's mine. Okay. Now, I'm going to, do, 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 do. I'm going to sew my apron ties. Actually, we're going to sew from the bottom of the armpit, or where our apron tie is going to start, and we're going to sew it all the way up and around back down to where the other tie is um, just to put a, a seam in and we're just going to take this part and we're going to put some pins in all right now we're just going to sew this seam and I am going to do a zigzag just because I want it to stay put This is where I mean you can run into trouble if you don't have enough fabric left under the collar. Because you can't fold this bottom part of the collar. It just doesn't want to fold or sew. So you just leave a little flap of fabric below your collar. Make sure all the pins are out. Okay, here's my ties. I'm just going to fold this in and curl this in a little bit just like that I'm just I've taken it and it would be just like if, if I was folding a piece of fabric for one of my braided rag rugs you just fold it in on itself and then fold it again and it's completely closed and it's a good solid tie and just so you can get a good close-up look here's this the length of fabric it is folded in on both sides to the center and we will put a pin in it and now we're just going to sew along the pinned edge here's the side of the apron where the tie meets and here's my tie and I have double stitched a good solid seam on the side of my apron and then I've stitched the tie to the side of the apron using an X and then boxing it in this makes a really good solid tie that you just can't yank off unless you really reef on it. There we go. There's the apron. Now let's decorate it. I am not a frills and lace girl, but I do like a little bit of decoration, and this amount of lace is just nice. So what I'm going to do is, because I want to keep this pocket useful, I am just going to hand stitch some lace right to the edge of the pocket and Bob's your uncle we have a nice little bit of decoration on the edge of the pocket and Bob's your uncle we have a wide enough piece of lace to cover our buttons now you can see where I have sewn down around the buttons, fold the lace under, and I'm just going to follow the lace along the lines where I sewed closing my button front closed. And turn, go across the bottom. And turn again and we're going to sew up back up the other side of the lace 
and then turn and sew that closed across the top. Giving it a back stitch to make sure it stays in place. There. Isn't that pretty? And it has a matching bit of lace on the pocket. All right, let's start with our first decoration. Now, oh, there we go. And Bob's your uncle. And there is the first of many, hopefully, on my apron. We gotta let this dry before we do much more work. Okay, here it is, folks. I can't model it for you because a lot of the uh, paint is still wet. This says, feed them full, love them empty, they'll whistle while they work. This one says, use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. And sorry, John, but I misspelled slinging. But that's supposed to, supposed to say sling and hash. And there you go. The very first thing you saw me put on was Bob's your uncle. And who to thunk it? Queen of the one paw wonders. And of course, what would my dinners be without a thumbs up? This is the Mrs. Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead saying, you want to see me wear it? Wait till October because I'm not modeling it until I'm slinging hash with my little brother John. Take care. Bye-bye.